Hey, Michael Church with Crawl Space Ninja, and I'm here with Dom Zukowski, who is our corporate trainer that goes out into all of Crawl Space Ninja land and teaches how to encapsulate crawl spaces. And today we've got a video topic that we thought was interesting. We're going to talk about what is the number one upgrade that most homeowners don't do whenever doing mold remediation in the crawl space. And we're also going to give you some tips for mold remediation. Stay tuned. If you're new to Crawl Space Ninja, we talk about everything related to mold remediation, crawl space encapsulation, basement waterproofing. We hope you'll subscribe to our channel, ring that notifications bell, and also follow us on Facebook. And I do want to mention that Dom did a uh, basement waterproofing job in Raleigh, North Carolina. Is that right? Yes. That was horribly done by a competitor that caused a lot of engineering yeah, they, problems. Yeah, they actually ruined the foundation. And I'm going to put a link to that video down below, so make sure you check that out if you think about having your uh, basement waterproofed. All right, Dom, so let's uh, let's talk about this subject. We uh, we do a lot of mold remediation. A lot. There's a lot of uh, misinformation. The DHU kills mold. Leave the insulation in place when squirting the joys. There's all this garbage information out there. And we did a video with Dusty Jameson. He's a home inspector. I'll put a link to that one as well. But uh, we talked about mold rem remediation protocols. So let's cover that first. What are the proper mold remediation protocols? And then what's that thing that most homeowners overlook, that final step that that is an upgrade that they should be thinking about? Okay. Yeah. So obviously you want to dry the wood out. You know, there's no real point of trying to remediate mold if it's still wet. There's a lot of companies that don't dry the wood out. I see it on a daily basis. That's like the number one thing you should do. It's the number one thing yeah. that you should always do. Yeah. So if it's like July. Yeah, it's humid. Humid. Ducks are sweating. I'm and they're, sweating. they're running in there with their pump sprayer, squirting the joists. We see that. Yeah. Homeowners see that. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't mean to interrupt you, but go ahead. So the number one thing, dry the wood out. Yep, definitely want to dry the wood out and then just physically removing the mold. You can look at it on almost any container where it's like a cleaner of mold and you can look on there and see that it says remove any visible mold. So you want to actually get down in there and physically remove all of the mold from the wood and all that. Are you telling me that I just can't go down there and squirt the joists and it take care of the mold according to the disinfectant instructions. Is that correct? Yeah. You got to visibly remove it. Visibly remove it. Okay. okay. So what, not, it's still there. Right. So we do soda blasting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not, not everybody has access, especially DIYers may not have access to soda blasting. So what are some of the ways that they would visibly remove the mold? You have the HIPAA vacuum. You could rent that. You can get down there and just basically vacuum the mold off the wood or the way we used to do it when we first started, uh, you get down there with your bucket and a little scrub brush and you scrub the mold off. Dip the rag in the disinfectant, dip the brush in the disinfectant, and just go, go to work. Just go to town on the mold. Make sure you wear your PPE. Yeah, make sure your respirator covered, the full gloves to the, to the elbow kind of situation. Definitely want to wear a respirator. The air gets a little spicy. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Especially that that Anabet cleaner is a little spicy. It's spicy. Yeah, but everything is. They're all they're all pretty pretty gnarly things. Plus, you're knocking mold spores into the air. You don't want to. Yeah, you be, don't want to breathe in mold. Yeah, you got to have in. Uh, you got to have a HEPA air scrubber or some kind of negative air blowing air out of the crawl space. Of course. A lot of people don't talk about that. And we also put a HEPA air scrubber in the living space while we're soda blasting, just in case any of it gets in there as well. Turn off the AC. Make sure the mechanical isn't spreading air because your ducts are leaking like crazy. Yeah, that and right. when we seal it up, you don't want to ruin your HVAC unit. It's like plugging the in and out of a vacuum cleaner. Right, what about the insulation? Can I leave all that in place and do all that? For the soda blasting? For any of it. No, you gotta take it out. <laughs> You know, you don't want any you don't want any batting insulation in your crossway. Just get it out. What? I can't just spray the tip of the joist and kill all the mold? No. No, it's everywhere. That's crazy. If it's wood, it's got mold on it. <laughs> That's true. So we dried the wood, we're physically removing the mold, we pulled the insulation out. Mm -hmm. Uh and then we also uh, applied the disinfectant. Yep, after soda blasting. We try to blow off all the duct work and the actual wood. When we soda blast, just because it, gets, it leaves that, you know, the sodium bicarbonate on there. Yeah, you don't want to put 
liquid on soda because it gets a little cakey. Yeah. So we try to try to blow all that off the ductwork, but we leave the soda on the ground because it's a natural disinfectant. That's correct. So at this point, we've pulled out the vapor barrier. Yeah. So what's the last thing? What's the thing that everybody's overlooking though? What I see a lot of people don't think about is actually our X70, sealing the wood. Like if you're installing a deck outside, granted it's pressure treated wood, you're still going to want to seal the deck. It's, it's exactly the same thing, but in your crawl space. Exactly. Exactly. And you know, the X70 is more than just a, a wood sealer. It's a moisture preventative. So it actually keeps the water from being absorbed into the wood. God forbid your DHU goes down and you didn't know it. It's nice to have that layer of protection to keep that humidity from being absorbed, but it also has silver in it. It's a silver nanotechnology and silver is a natural antifungal. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize that. So that's the other thing it does is if a mold spore is floating around and then tries to attach itself to the wood, kills it. Dead. As long as the humidity is under control and the wood moisture level is under control as well. So you can't do all that, not put in a dehumidifier, you know, and all that. It's it's all gotta be part of the system. Oh yeah, you gotta do it in the proper order. Yeah, we, it's, got a, it's got a proper order. We've actually done a video about are wood sealers effective and, and when are they not effective? And I'll put a link to that down below. So there's more to it. You just don't go in there and, oh, it, it's got silver and prevents moisture. I'll just squirt that over the mold because once you do that, you've locked that mold in. Just sealed it. And, and you could eventually kill it, but you'll never get it off because that X70 is pretty good at sealing. It's thick. Yeah, it's thick stuff. So anyway, and you can also apply X70 to any unfinished wood. You don't want to put it on drywall, but if you've got a basement that's got studs on the block wall or something like that, you can apply the X70 there. You can spray it up in your attic if you've got a mold or a uh, problem on the roof decking or things like that as well. So it's not just for crawl spaces. Yeah, hey, you can use it for anything. Yeah, just don't put it on drywall. That's the only thing. And it's it's a primer base, so it's it's latex based. Yep. It smells like paint. That's basically what the smell smells. It's basically what it is. That's pretty much what it is. But it's paint with silver. Okay. Michael Church Crawl Space Ninja here with Dom. Hope you make it a happy and blessed day. We'll see you later.